there used to be a time when you can just swap any part of your car, just unscrew it, plug the new part in, clip it in and off you go. But with these more modern vehicles, and when I say modern, probably talking about after 2006, the most parts you're going to uh, replace on your vehicle, it will require recoding, relearning, readaptation. And then something like this came in very, very handy. You will need a proper, proper scan tool to do all your recalibration or readaptation on your vehicle. We're going to take a look today at this uh, Launch CP919X and this is a hell of a tool. <laughs> Let's do some unboxing and see what's, uh, what's it capable of. Okay, now this is what I call a rugged case, okay? This is <laughs> very, very, very hard. Let's start from this side, you just open it up, you got accessories, this is the this is the cable, the connection cable is not wireless, yeah, it's a, it's a wired connection, it says DOIP, you got the accessories, you got chargers, all kinds of chargers, and you got the, uh, the USB Type-C cable if uh, you will need to, um, to charge it from, uh, from a socket, you got the user manual, and you got another quick start guide right here. Everything you need to know. I like this part. I really like it. I like how you can you can store your stuff in one side of this this case, and you can have the diagnosis right here on the other one. I like the, how the uh, the tool feels in your hand. It's just just proper. Everything is rubberized. It's um, pretty heavy duty. I really like it and it also has this stand right here in the back you can either set it down like that either on your steering wheel or at the desk or whatever this one also has a uh, has a camera you can take pictures you got the usb charger right here the connection and pretty much pretty much it simple no need for more but let's just power it up and see how it looks like Okay, the, the screen is nice and bright, it's nothing spectacular, it's nothing wow about it. It's clear, it's clear to read, it's pretty easy, you can find everything right here on the front page. But the most important thing, what I want to show you about this tool, is after we will pop it in. Uh, and I, I have to tell you right now, because this is really exciting, this tool has ECU coding, and bidirectional control, okay, which is very, very important, as you will see in the following uh, moments. But let's go really quick through the through the menu. We got diagnose OBD, IM, reset function, battery voltages, other module modules. You have the mall as well. Let's see what's in the mall. You got softwares you can buy. You got stuff like uh, GMC, McLaren, uh, Maxxis, or motor angle calibration. Okay, this will not come as basics, but you can still buy them. Uh, by the way, this is uh, once you buy this tool, it's uh, two years of free updates, and after those uh, two years, it's around uh, two hundred dollars per year. Uh, here you can see it. So it's two hundred and $37.54 for 12 months. But it's not, it's not necessarily for you to upgrade this, okay? From what I understand, if you buy it like right now, this is 2023, you got two years of free updates, okay? So you have until 2025, you have free updates. And once that, that, that period will expire, you can still use the tool, but you won't have new updates on newer cars test vehicle number one this is a 2011 mercedes sprinter let's just hook it on you can see it's already starting uh, to do the uh, automatic search the auto detect okay yeah this is a sprinter start system detection right hand steering let's do a health report mission is on
Okay, so uh, this is the report. You can see it. You can put your shop name, your address, your telephone number. Very professional looking uh, report. You can send it on email and uh, whatever. Uh, this is all the, uh, the faults that the car has. Uh, so we got uh, signal acquisition. The problem is I put uh, LEDs on all the, uh, the side lights of, of this vehicle and of course they are not CAN bus compliant so that's why they are showing up as, uh, as error. Also speaker 4, speaker 2 and the antenna has an open circuit on this van. I'm gonna get to them a bit later. Now let's get to the very, to the most interesting part uh, which this tool can perform. Okay, let's go to the uh, engine, um, engine module first. And here, of course, you can see module information, clear fault codes. Um, but <laughs> the most interesting part is that it has this actuation test, special functions, coding, backup reserve, and settings changeover. Let's do some actuation test first. Let's see what we got here. We got test of compression, got fuel pump, a vent line heater element, you got the uh, EGR positioner. You got the boost pressure control flap transducer. You got injectors. You can perform diagnosis uh, glowing. You can check alternator, throttle valve uh, actuator, thermostat, Westgate pressure uh, transducer. I don't know if that's the right term, but whatever. Uh, oil, oil spray lev uh, nozzle level, injector shutoff, and EGR. Um, if we're going to go to uh, injectors, for example, of course, we can change the values of the uh, of the injectors, and this is very very important. And this actually helped me uh, get rid of my last problem, which was um, uh, if you've seen my my previous videos, I had problems with the uh, quantity injector uh, control valve, and you do have to um, to reset the trim values of uh, of the injectors after you swap the uh, the quantity control valve. Yeah, so this helped me. Uh, basically to um, to do the in initialization of the of the new component which came very very handy uh, you can see the west gate right here so this is, it's a b turbo uh, engine and um, the flaps are controlled by vacuum so you can check them individually you can do all sorts of tests which is which is amazing i've never seen i've never tested so far a diagnosis tool that can do these kinds of, of, of things okay we got variant coding um, I don't I don't want to go in too deep on the coding because I can mess things up and uh, yeah like I've said I'm, I'm just a, a car enthusiast I'm not a professional mechanic but I'm sure that uh, for a mechanic these things make sense and uh, there are they can play with uh, they can change a lot of, of stuff we also have a special function initialization after component replacement you can see how many things uh, you can uh, you can reset after you've changed uh, for let, let's say for example uh, the muff uh, sensor the dpf uh, pressure sensor fuel pump glow plugs uh, dpf leakage in uh, system uh, charge air yeah when you click on it it says after you changed one of these for example, uh, MAF airflow sensor, rail pressure sensor, DPF uh, injectors, oxygen sensors. After you swapped one of these, it's good. It's a good thing to uh, to do a, a reinitialization. Okay, uh, resetting the lambda values, relearning of throttle valve stop, reset fill factor of air filter. Filter, yeah, not not a lot of um, of scanners can do this, but it says right here during maintenance this is not required so only use this function if the component air filter was replaced due to a fault code so not um, not required during maintenance and also teaching the new uh, DPF if you're gonna uh, clean it or whatever um, after you after you swap it maybe you can do a, uh, a new, t new teaching of the DPF. Also, um, programming reset adaptation di data. Yeah, if you had these codes, you can do a reset. You can set the uh, maximum uh, vehicle speed limit. The van is or your car is limited. You can um, you can delete that uh, that limit. Zero quantity calibration. Once again, 
after you uh, you change the injectors or you clean them or whatever you should do this uh, operation uh, quick teaching of the zero calibration uh, values at idle or on uh, when uh, when driving and adjustment of quantity uh, of injector uh, uh, quantities yeah so once again when you swap the uh, the injectors you can see them right here and you can input the uh, the new values okay so these are the engine components yeah a lot of you can see a lot of them um <laughs> Like I've said, I don't think I've seen um, I've seen a scan tool uh, capable of, of doing so so many things. Let's go on, on the um, uh, SEM actuation module, yeah, the uh, the lights and uh, and so on. Right. Once again, you can uh, you can see the um, actuation test, the coding backup reserve, data stream variant coding. Let's do some actuation tests. You can see the headlamps, yeah, and you can actually turn on or off the uh, the side lamps, the low beam, or the main beam. Now this comes very handy for let's say, for example, um, you don't have your the, the low beam doesn't work, okay, and you need to figure out is it a communication problem from the dash switch to the uh, ECU or is it from the ECU to the uh, to the actual lamps okay by doing this you are bypassing bypassing basically the um, the command switch on on your vehicle and you can fire it, uh, you can you can follow it up and see maybe uh, uh, that one of the wires are, are are broken or whatever really easy to um, to pinpoint what's what's the actual problem of the car uh, exterior lighting as well you got the um, the left side marker lamp or the right marker lamp okay we can start by pressing f4 now they should be on i'm checking in the mirrors and yes they are on and stop again right see you can see right here the uh, the value changes okay we got the uh, windscreen wipers you can see that now they are um, in park position it even reads the uh, the washer the washer level it says too low. I've got the error as well in uh, in the dash. And you can start the uh, front wipers with button F3. Let's do F3. You can see them. Or F5. You can uh, you can spray some water if you have any. Okay, you got the uh, front passenger uh, door power window. Manual opening manual closing let's do f3 you can hear the window rolling down or once again closing okay this once again is let's say for example uh, something's wrong with the window you want to find out is it the actual um, uh, small motor uh, inside the door or is it the um, or is it the button that doesn't work? Okay, if if this if the window will roll down uh, with this uh, with this uh, scan tool, then it's definitely the uh, the button that has an actual problem. So you can eliminate problems really really easily. Okay, rear lamps. You got all your lamps right here, and you can turn them on or off individually. Okay lights, fog lights, reversing lights, stop lights, license plate lights. Uh, we can turn them on or off each and every one of them just to check if everything is working. A central locking audible warning device. This is actually the, the horn, right? I'm not going to start that. <laughs> uh, central locking and relay circuits, which I'm not very sure what, uh, what this is, but... Um, you can uh, start and stop actuation terminal 15, uh, circuit 15R and terminal uh, 61. If you can write new codings, you can uh, back up and uh, recreate. I'm not sure what's that. I don't want to get in, into it uh, too much, but you can see all the data right here. This is absolutely crazy. You can write new codings, which is wow. Really, it's, it, it, it's just some, something else. So basically, in all of these modules that the the the, the scanner is uh, is really is reading, you can go into them. Let's go into the instrument cluster, and you either have 
module information, clear fault codes, actuation test, variant coding, fault code, data stream, special functions or coding um, backup reserve. Let's do some actuations on the, uh, let's say, the buzzer. Okay, you can start it. You can hit the buzzer. The buzzer is buzzing. Indicator lamps, test image LCD, switch illuminations, instrument lighting. You can change it from uh, zero to uh, to one hundred. Now jumping on this uh, 2011 Volkswagen Passat, we can already see we have a lot more modules to play with. So let's start with the engine. We got two fault codes. We got the uh, uh, the EGR. It's acting up. It says uh, insufficient detected um, flow. Uh, let's go into the engine electronics and see what uh, what we can find around here. Let's see actuation tests. What kind of uh, actuation tests we can do you can see already it's a bit more different so this this actually will differ from uh, one car to uh, to another okay so let's check the uh, agr valve okay it says uh, brief actuation let's start you can hear the uh, egr it's just clicking so it's opening and closing the valve Fan one control circuit. Again, we can do actuation. Not sure if you can hear it, but the actual fan has now started. It does show differently from what uh, what it was on the uh, on the Sprinter. Uh, let's see adaptation. We got activation of a start stop function we can deactivate that now the problem is that uh, this Volkswagen Passat um, if I'm gonna deactivate the start stop function every time I'm, I'm driving or whatever it's gonna pop up on the dash saying that uh, there's a problem with the start stop system and it doesn't work which is annoying this is why I always shut it off from uh, from the switch uh, next to the uh, gear selector we got uh, injector injector correction values. Let's see what's that. Yeah, you can input the new value. So once again, if you're gonna change the injectors, you can do that really easily. Learn valves for solenoid valve closing time uh, correction, uh, particle filter uh, initialization, service regeneration of particle filter while uh, while while driving. You can also do that. We got uh, basic settings. Adaptation of the turbocharger, automatic exhaust uh, gas recirculation test, automatic test procedure. Let's see what's that. You can adjust it. Uh, once again, no one will go too deep in them. Res resetting of learn values for closing time correction fuel injectors. Wow, that's a lot. Resetting of learn uh, DPF filter values. Okay, let's leave the uh, engine electronics alone before I mess things up and I won't be able to start my uh, car my car again. <laughs> let's go to uh, instrument cluster. Once again, we have um, actuation test. We have basic settings, long code adaptation, a lot of stuff that I've never seen so far. Okay, let's do some actuation tests. We got acoustic turn signal acknowledgement, uh, brake and uh, parking light warning light. Uh, buzzer, component protection, display of battery capacity, a lot of stuff, fuel gauge, gong, <laughs> gong, <laughs> hot light, uh, oil level indicator lamp, let's try and see that, let's start it, and nope, it doesn't show anything, error occurred at start, I, I believe that this car doesn't have uh, a level, uh, level sensor for the oil I'm not too sure but yeah probably I'm right because I've never seen it going on it doesn't uh, eat a lot of oil but yeah I've never seen it go uh, go on seat belt uh, warning indicator lamp segment test speedometer test image in center display washer fluid indicator lamp they I mean uh, they are a lot really a lot Let's start and do we have something yet? Yeah, we got the we got the light going on there. 
additional coding, break recommendation, car menu source, just a lot, cruise control display, cylinder shut off, day, what day is it, the time and probably the date, uh, display correction of fuel gauge, emergency telephone number, if I'm gonna press this button right here to call for help or whatever, just a lot, a lot. I won't be able to do this, probably I'm gonna need a few hours to go through each and every one of them, but wow, there are a lot, a lot of functions. Just, just so many, so many of them. Also on the uh, AC system, uh, you can activate the clutch, you can uh, activate the AC compressor. <laughs> the best way to explain it, if the car has a module on with this thing, you can check it, you can activate it, you can deactivate it, you can do uh, actuation tests, adaptation, and it's just wow. There, there are so many things you can do with this car, it's just, with this, with this scan tool. Is just unbelievable. Also, you can do a mileage correction if you if you're changing the uh, the instrument cluster or whatever for some for some reason, you can do it right here. You just input a new value, and there you go. You have a brand new car. Yeah, so on this car, we have 102 data stream we can uh, that we can actually modify in uh, some uh, shape or form which is absolutely amazing. And uh, this is only on the uh, instrument cluster, okay? <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think there is something that uh, I, I could potentially have any problems in this vehicle and I won't be able to track it down with this, uh, with this tool. It's just absolutely amazing. Also, we got the uh, battery regulation. And of course, if we go out, and uh, check the main uh, the main menu. Whoop. You can go in directly into the uh, uh, the reset functions. Let's say if you want to do the uh, battery reset, uh, battery matching, battery control, read fault codes, no fault codes. Okay. Current battery parameter. Yeah, this is a 70 hour battery capacity. And if you're gonna change the battery, you can configure the new battery parameter right here. Also, you can input the, 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 the serial number and the manufacturer, which is, which is absolutely great. What else do we have on the reset? Uh, we can see a lot of them DPF, from DPF regen uh, to the EGI adaptation, uh, AC system, uh, relearn, add blue reset, cool and bleed engine power balance monitoring, um, gas particle filter regeneration, immobilizer, knock sensors, injectors, you name it, you got it right here. Uh, start, stop, reset, but definitely, definitely a lot, a lot. This is a very, very capable tool. I absolutely love it. And I um, yeah, hope I covered <laughs> most of them, but uh, as, you, as you've seen, um, it's just a lot, a lot of information. Of course, you also have the uh, data stream. Um, let's just do fuel rail pressure and uh, engine RPMs. Let's see how it handles that. You can see them in a graph like that. Start it up. There you go. Or you can combine, I believe, both of them and do them like that. It's really nice that it says actually right here you have the uh, the legend the, the green and the blue shows really really clear so there you go as i've said i will probably need days and days just to go through each and every one of the things that this uh, scan tool can do it's just amazing by far the most uh, advanced one i've tested uh, so far i'm, I'm really 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 uh, enjoying this it's it, it's easy it's fun and bottom line is i think that if your vehicle is capable of uh, communicating with this tool it would definitely do it you, you can do so much active tests bi-directional control ecu reprogramming and on this price i mean this is a this is a this is a steal probably at the time i'm gonna uh, film this video i think i've seen it around 400 pounds uh, but there are some vouchers in there if you check Amazon. I will link 
the uh, the the product from the official launch um, Amazon storefront. Uh, make sure you buy the originals. Don't buy the knockoffs. But you will uh, you will get the link down low in the description. I hope it helped, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.